Hey guys, welcome back to our December 2024 production updates. We'll start off by talking about Altmill. You guys might have read that we were expecting components, the rails and stuff to arrive for the Altmill around the start of November. Those parts have been delayed. First of all, some of the parts needed to go through border inspection, which added a couple weeks of inspection time. But secondarily, there was a strike at the port. Once the inspection was done, they weren't, be, they weren't able to be unloaded because of the port strike in Vancouver. And then there was a strike for the rail. There was just a lot of strikes that caused the shipment of those parts to be delayed. They are on the way now. So we're going to start building the machines as quickly as possible as soon as they arrive. And we are planning to aim to get the full queue done by January 1st. However, we're still waiting on those parts and while they will arrive soon, we hadn't really shipped too much machines out because of that reason. On the good news though, Ben ha and Daniel have been chipping away at the 2x4 alt mill. They finalized the design, they finalized the packaging, and now all we're figuring out is the production schedule for that. Batch 4 is in production now for alt mill and we are going to put in the parts for Altmill 2x4 in that batch and those are expected to arrive probably at the end of January so we'll have parts ready to start to build those. There are a couple things that we need to figure out. One is the how many machines we're going to build and kind of like understand what people are looking for specifically with a smaller machine. If you're interested in ordering a 2x4 Altmill potentially and you want to have potentially first access to those machines, there's a survey on the blog so make sure to go to the blog, check out the survey, tell us a bit more about what you're looking for, and we'll be able to um, work with that. Mike and John and some of the team here, we've been working on building the uh, quote-unquote smalt, smalt mill. Essentially what that is, is just smaller versions of the alt mill. Uh, basically we're just Frankensteining parts left over from production, trying to make different size machines. The one thing that's really exciting about the alt mill platform is how rigid it is. The reason why we decided to play around with building metal cutting CNC's using the alt mill platform is because from Daniel's testing, especially with the aluminum, and um, I believe they've done steel as well, you can cut metals. And uh, theoretically, the smaller the machine is, the more rigid it's gonna be. We believe that we can build an affordable platform for metal cutting um, using the alt mill platform with some modifications to the design and the size of it, obviously. And also like considering different features that users might want to use, such as coolant and uh, auto tool changing and so on and so forth. And also um, four pole, multi-pole spindles for higher torque, lower RPM bits. And so we also have a part in the survey. You can talk, you can tell us a bit more if that's also something you're interested in. The plan for those is to also get a small batch of parts to kind of like sell or um, use in the office here for making parts or um, as you saw in one of the previous videos to do the tapping. They're not super expensive for us to build, especially because we're using a lot of the, the parts that we're using already for production to use up some of the parts that we're not using. We call it the small mill because it's a small alt mill. But yeah, some of the test data that Daniel's put together the material removal rate for the alt mill itself is insane. There's no other hobby CNC out there that can cut as fast as the alt mill can. In other news, we did have some delays in the long mill spindle kits last month, the month before. We're happy to say that those, that's been completely resolved. We've swapped over the boards for the VFDs and we've been uh, just shipping out those spindle kits as soon as we are getting orders. I also know that Johan's playing around with having compatibility with other hobby CNC machines. If that's also something that your guys are interested in, uh, let us know. I believe the price for the spindle kit is $540 uh, American or um, $726 Canadian, which is probably one of the cheaper options on the market, but Obviously, we do all the testing, the configuration, and the setup. And you also get a dust shoe included with that order. If that's something you're interested in, you want us to support your machines that might not be a CNC Labs built product, let us know as well. Vortex Rotary Axis, 
We also got the components in for the closed loop steppers and everything. So those have been shipping out and um, haven't heard any issues with that also. The long mill kits are also shipping without delays. Since we were sitting around waiting for alt mill parts this month, we started pre-packaging long mills. Right now we're in the busy season, so a lot of people are buying long mills right now. So we're just kind of like prepping to package as much as stuff for that, so that once we switch completely over to building the alt mills for the rest of the year, uh, we don't have to come back and start up building uh, long mills again until the end of the year. So right now we have 150-ish machines ready to go. If you're looking for a long mill, you should be able to get it pretty quickly if, if uh, you order it around this time. G-Control panel computer have, has been pretty successful so far. Uh, we shipped out, I think, about 45 computers and people have been using them, haven't had any issues with the assembly process, so I'm happy with that. There was a small problem with a number of customers where the computer would turn on but the screen wouldn't. We're able to work with the manufacturer and the customers to identify on some computers, there's a standoff that's uh, contacting part of the display control board, um, causing the display to shut off. We're able to either cut or remove that and have the computer fully functional. One, if you have that problem, please let us know and we can help you solve it. The new production batch, which will be 300 computers, those have all had this problem addressed and we don't expect this to be a problem going forward. Other exciting news is that now we have um, resources available for different configurations, such as if you want a program such as G-Sender Startup automatically, as soon as you turn on the computer, uh, we have instructions on how to set that up. We also have a guide on if you want to change the RAM, the memory. Right now it comes default with eight gigabytes. If you want to switch to a 16 gigabyte, which is the max that this computer supports, you have that option as well. We'll also have uh, resources that'll talk about how to change the SSD, the M.2 SSD. So if 128 gigs isn't enough for you, you'll be able to upgrade those as well. If you're looking for the resources, make sure to check out the resources page online. A lot of customers have been asking about what's going on with us selling Lightburn licenses. So what has happened recently is Lightburn is trying to crack down on rogue sales of licenses. So every Lightburn license comes with three seats. So if you have three different computers, you can put Lightburn on all three for the price of one license. But that's as long as you are the one using it. However, some companies have been basically selling each seat individually. If price the license $100, they would charge $100, $100, $100, or maybe slightly less. You get one license, you get the same license, but as long, if you don't put it on different computers, then you would be none the wiser. That's obviously a problem because that's not fair because you know, you're supposed to be getting three seats, but when, once you start putting it on different computers, you're not getting what you're supposed to get. It's not the sales that Lightburn intends to make, and so that was, that's one thing that they're trying to crack down on. The other thing is that sellers will price the late burn licenses outside of the agreed upon price. If the price for a license is supposed to be $60, everyone should sell it for $60. If one person's selling it for less, then you have this competition for the same product which um, shouldn't be the case. You know, Lightburn is trying to figure out that. And also the other thing is Lightburn is a very good software for the price that they've been selling it at, but they want to grow their team, they want to grow their product, they want to make improvements. And obviously that costs money. To make that possible, they want to increase the price of the license also. And as far as I'm aware, price prior was 60 US dollars, now the price is 100 US dollars. It's a $40 difference, which is not small, but from my experience using Lightburn, I do feel that it's still a really high, good value software, and they're very um, fair about you, like allowing people to use it. And um, I think it's a reasonable uh, trade-off for the additional support and um, innovation that they're gonna bring to the software space. One of the things that they wanna impose is uh, for user, uh, sorry, companies to sell only by bundling the license. So what that means is if you buy a laser beam, we have, you can't buy the Lightburn license unless we bundle it together. So 
if a laser is $460 and you want to buy the license and you have we'd have to package it together like uh, personally I don't feel like I should we should be the ones imposing a specific license we should allow customers to make their own choices and by bundling them it, it, it implies that you have to use this software or you you have to pay for this software to get access to our products they are okay with us selling to customers that already are our customers However, we don't have the technical expertise to specifically find a way where we can differentiate between what customer bought what and allow them to order it only if they've already ordered the other thing. We haven't really done anything about this at this point. The other option that Lightburn and I discussed is to have um, a seller portal. So what that means is rather than people buying the license through us, they actually go to another site um, on Lightburn, they buy it directly from Lightburn, we get a cut of the sale essentially. And that allows them to keep everything through their own ecosystem. We don't have to worry about the distribution of licenses. We're giving people a channel to be able to buy the, the software itself. Actually, it's funny because when I suggested that option, oh, we never thought about that. Now we're going to have to figure this, like, so this is a good idea. So now we're like, rolling back all of the discussions that we've had about the way that we want to do this licensing stuff. At least for now, if you guys want to buy Lightburn, just go buy it from the Lightburn store. I might be able to talk to them and say, hey, like we're not scamming people. Is it okay if we just sell it on our website as we usually do? Because that's that's the main problem. Like as, as, it, as long as everyone follows the rules, there really isn't any problem, but because people aren't following the rules, they have to find new systems to make sure that people can't break the rules. I don't know, it's kind of complicated, but I totally get it. We are discontinuing the Ultra Beam project. It may be something that we come back to in the future. I think that there's a big future in CO2 lasers and there's a lot of innovation that can be made in this space. I think it embodies the, the goals that we have as a company to make the rapid, tech, rapid prototyping technology more accessible. And I believe that there's a synergy that can be made between the products that we have now amalgamated into new methods of uh, manufacturing as well. But as of right now, we need to kind of revisit everything as well and figure out the plan for all the new products and all the new machines that we're building now. Doing that and also trying to fit in the Ultra Beam at this stage is not um, easy to do. I would also let everyone know that anything that's been built under the CNC Labs umbrella at this point is still owned by the company, the IP, the designs, and so on and so forth. Additionally, um, we retain the ownership of the company, sorry, the customer information that's been collected for such as people signing up for email lists, interested in the laser product, the videos, the content, the um, testing data, and so on and so forth. If a new product comes out, that's not in, within our umbrella. We can't make any promises on the reliability, the support, and the reputation to carry over to a product that isn't under our umbrella. I feel like the laser as, as it is right now isn't competitive in the market. I think right now there's more powerful options, more affordable options, and really the only benefit for us selling our own laser is that you know it's plug and play, it'll work and you get the support alongside it. But fundamentally, you know, we all we should also strive to build better performing products. It shouldn't just be the best option because we support it, right? So I've been doing some research on new designs, uh, new laser diodes, new laser modules, and I believe that we can come up with a new version of the laser that will be more powerful, still affordable, still compatible, and get good results. We're not sure if we're gonna build another batch of the laser beam as it is now. I do wanna build something that will be better. No specific plans on what that's gonna look like yet, but obviously we'll share that as we continue doing the development for it. So yeah, if anyone has uh, thoughts or comments um, on what they wanna see, please let us know. Uh, okay, well, last things to talk about. The Toronto Woodworking Show is coming up in January. I believe, yeah, January 17th, 18th, and 19th. Our team will be there with the alt mill and the long mill. So yeah, make sure to check us out. More information is available on the blog. If you wanna check out the links, the other extra content, check out our survey for the different size alt mills. 
please go to our website. But otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next month.